This is the third question from the uh, magnetism review packet. There's an a lot of uh, awful lot of electrostatics in it, some vector math. So uh, it's still cool um, when you read part B. I think there's some really interesting stuff going on here. The question reads: Three particles are arranged on a coordinate axis as shown. Particle A is negatively charged, uh, ne uh, negative 0.2 nanocoulombs, and is initially at rest on the y-axis at position y 0.03 meters. The other two particles each have a charge of positive 0.3 nanocoulombs and are held uh, fixed on the x-axis at negative 0.04 and positive 0.04 respectively. Calculate the magnitude of the net electric field on particle A when it is at uh, 3 centimeters from the origin. So uh, we've got a triangle. Let's go ahead and start by uh, describing that triangle. So um, I'm going to use some lines here. Let's go ahead and just kind of connect the dots. So we've got uh, A is at the top, and I'm relating it to B uh, on the bottom. This is part of the right triangle, as we'll find out here. I'm going to go ahead and accentuate the x-axis to complete the two similar triangles. Um, and since this is positively charged, um, so uh, QB is positive, and oops, mistake. QB is positive, these guys are positive, and this is negative. So we're going to have a force of attraction between A and the other charges. So let's go ahead and sketch that. That means that the force acting on A is going to be towards B along that line. And likewise, I'm going to have the mirror image of that, the exact same magnitude. And relative angle, let's talk a little bit about angles here. Um, we're eventually going to need them. I'm going to identify this as the angle theta. I think your instinct might have been to use this as the angle theta right here. And the reason I avoided that is because it's referencing the uh, y-axis. It's not a big deal if you do. You just got to keep a couple things in mind. First of all, I'm just going to draw another reference line here. And since this line is parallel uh, with the x-axis, so this guy and this guy are parallel, I can say that uh, these are alternate interior angles here, and that is also the angle theta. So uh, the reason I'm going to use uh, this one is because eventually I'm going to need the angle theta, and I can um, I know all these distances. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, the, uh, the sine function and say, hey, uh, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side is point. Uh, it's 3 centimeters, so 0 0.03 meters. I could have left it in centimeters because we're only looking at ratios here. And uh, the hypotenuse is what I'm looking for uh, here. I don't know what that distance is, but I'm going to need it to solve the problem. I could have used another trig function. Of course, I could use uh, tangent, which uses opposite and the adjacent. And the adjacent side here is 0 0.04, um, and that would have given me my angle theta which I'm eventually going to figure out uh, is 36.9 degrees. Um, I've done the work, obviously, ahead of time. Uh, I ended up using this hypotenuse, which is going to be 0 0.05 meters. Um, and I just used the Pythagorean theorem to find that. So uh, I'll start with the Pythagorean theorem and say that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared where c is the hypotenuse, so c, which is the distance between the two particles, is going to be the square root of 0 0.03 meters squared plus 0 0.04 meters squared. And when I do that, I find that c is equal to 0 0.05 meters. So I wouldn't have done that if I didn't ultimately need that distance d separating the particles, which is going to be a Coulomb's law distance. So I need that. That ends up going in here, 0 0.05 meters, and that's where the 36.9 degrees comes from. OK, so now I recognize that this is going to be an electrostatic force uh, between two particles, and I end up using Coulomb's law. That's Coulomb's constant k, 2, or in this case, qa and qb, divided by the distance d of 0 0.05 meters that I just solved for with the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, I'm going to multiply the constant 9 times 10 to the 9th, uh, sorry, uh, not negative 9th, positive 9th, Thank you, uh, Charles Coulomb. The units are Coulombs. Um, uh, sorry, not Coulombs. They are Newton uh, squared. Let me fix this. The units are Newtons 
meters squared per coulombs squared. Kind of some funky units. If you leave the units off, um, nobody's going to get upset. Um, Q1 uh, is the magnitude of the charges. So uh, I'm going to start, I'm going to call this one, or let's call that uh, QA. So uh, QA is negative 0.2. 0.2 nanocoulombs, that's times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs, and then I'm going to multiply that by B, which is down here, which is going to be 0.3 nanocoulombs. Notice that I've elected to leave off the signs. I already am dealing with direction. I know it's going to be attractive. And then I'm going to divide that by the square of the distance separating the two charges. It's going to be 0.05 meters, and then I square that. Okay, so now that I uh, run that through my calculator, I get 2.16 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. That's definitely not my answer. That's only one. That's this red line here. That's the force uh, acting on A down that axis towards, uh, towards B. So first of all, I should recognize that the X components are going to cancel out. If I'm going to draw the uh, components up there, let's go ahead and do that. So I've got an X component from the force vector acting to the right, an x component acting to the left. Since they're mirror images of each other, they're going to cancel out. The two y components are directed straight down, so I'm going to end up adding those two uh, y components together. So let's find one of the y components, and then the net force will simply be two times that answer. OK, so uh, now I'm ready to kind of finish the second part of uh, part A. I can say that the electrostatic net force is going to be equal to two times the y component of the electrostatic force. Uh, and so now I can say it's going to be two times um, the magnitude of that force, which is 2.16 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. And I got to remember to multiply that by the sine of 36.9 degrees, which we previously found, since that's the y component. And once I do that, I find that the net electric force is 2.6 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. And that's going to be directed downward. I need to make sure that I include the direction, since force is a vector, magnitude, and direction in my answer. Okay, so there's my answer to part A. Part B then says, particle A is released from rest. Describe its motion over time. This is pretty darn cool. So it requires the student to kind of imagine, all right, so this thing is going to be accelerated downward. It's going to be um, increasing its velocity until it reaches the origin here. When it's at the origin, I'm going to have two electric forces uh, that are opposite in direction, and then that's it. So let me go ahead and kind of sketch the forces acting on the object. So there's going to be an electric force to the right, an electric force to the left, and then that's it. I don't resolve them into components. There is no Y component. So the net force when it reaches the origin is going to be zero. The particle starts here, accelerates all the way till it gets here. It's not at rest. Its acceleration is zero, but its velocity is the maximum because it's been accelerating along that positive x-axis. And then really the opposite happens. Um, so when I sketch the position of the particle below uh, the origin somewhere down here along the negative x-axis, uh, we would see then that the x components still cancel out, but I'm going to have a leftover um, y component directed upwards. So basically what's going to happen is it's going to accelerate along the positive x-axis in the downward direction until it reaches zero, and then it starts to slow down. So it's still accelerating, except now it's accelerating upwards, its velocity decreases, um, and so this thing is just oscillating back and forth above and below the axis. Now I need to articulate that in a sentence. I'm going to say that the x component uh, will always cancel um, and therefore um, the particle only moves along the y-axis. Oops, that's a Y. Only moves along the Y axis. Um, and then we can say that it oscillates above and below um, 0.03 meters.
uh, between um, Y position um, positive 0.03 meters and negative 0.03 meters. Okay, um, kind of some chicken scratch there, but let's go ahead and move on. Um, it says in another experiment, so this is in the same problem, it says in another experiment particle A of charge negative 0.2 nanocoulombs is injected into a uniform magnetic field of strength 0.5 tesla directed into the page as shown below. So we've got a sketch of the particle at the top. Um, we know that it's moving, it's moving pretty darn fast at 6,000 meters per second on the diagram above. Sketch a complete path of particle A as it moves in the magnetic field. Of course, you should immediately recognize, hey, this is a moving charge in a magnetic field um, and it's going to have a force acting on it. You're going to use the right hand rule, um, whoa, uh, no you're not, you're going to use uh, the left hand rule and the reason is uh, this is a negative charge, so don't get duped like I almost just did. So I take out my left hand, the charge is negative, uh, my middle finger is into the paper, the direction of the force, my index finger is directed downward, um, and so therefore my thumb points in the direction of the net force initially here acting on this guy, and so this thing then is going to move in a circular arc with some center point here, point P, uh, and that will be the direction of motion, and so I've completed the requirements for part C. Part D then says calculate the magnitude of the force um, the magnetic field exerts on particle A as it enters the magnetic field. Um, so in part D, uh, I'm simply using um, the equation that relates magnetic force to velocity, magnetic field strength. Um, Fb is equal to Q velocity strength of the magnetic field times the sine of theta. Theta is 90 at all points. Um, since the magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of the page and the speed of the, the direction of velocity is always in that plane. So theta is always 90 and so therefore this is uh, always going to be equal to 1. Um, and so I'm solving for uh, the magnetic force F sub B. So I just plug these numbers in. Uh, Q is going to be equal to negative 0.2 uh, times 10 to the minus 9 Coulombs. I could have left the negative sign since out since I already know the direction of the force. It's always radially inward. Um, I'm going to multiply it by the velocity, which was given to me as 6,000 meters per second. And then I'm going to multiply that by the strength of the magnetic field, which was given to me as half a Tesla. Uh, when I run those through my calculator, I get 6 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. And, uh, well, they only ask for magnitude, so I don't need to answer the question in direction. I was about to put comma um, and say that the direction is radially inward. So if it did ask for just calculate the uh, force without specific, uh, specifying magnitude only, I would need to include direction. So 6 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons is my answer to part D. Part E then says an electric field can be applied to keep particle A, particle A moving in a straight line through the magnetic field. Ta-da! There's that classic example of magnetic field and electric fields canceling each other out, or at least the forces canceling each other out on a particle. So they want you to calculate the magnitude of this electric field and state its direction. So uh, we know that the electric force um, so let me uh, take out this uh, drawing tool here. So at the instant, oops, I didn't mean to rotate the page. All right, sorry about that. Um, the instant it enters the field, uh, I can draw a quick free body diagram here. We know that the um, magnetic force acting on the negative charge when it enters the field is to the left initially. So therefore, if it's going to move in a straight line, I need something to cancel that out. There must be an electric force acting to the right. So this is kind of a little free body diagram to remind myself the, char uh, the forces acting on that negative charge. Um, that becomes my equation. Um, Fb is equal to F sub e. And now I can say that QVB sine theta again theta is equal to 90, is equal to E times Q, the strength of the magnetic field uh, times the charge. They want me to um, calculate the strength of this magnetic field, so I'm solving for E. I'm just going to divide both sides by Q, and E becomes uh, VB sine theta, or just VB since sine theta is equal to 1. 
the Q's cancel out. So uh, the speed of the particle is 6,000 meters per second. That was given to me in the problem. And the strength of the magnetic field is half a Tesla, 0.5 T. And so therefore, I can say that this uh, magnetic field, sorry, the electric field is 3,000 newtons per coulomb, which are the units of electric field. Now, be careful here, because I need to indicate a direction. They didn't ask, um, they asked specifically for magnitude and direction. So the direction on this negative charge is to the, uh, to the right, but electric field is always indicated in the direction that a force would be on a positive charge. So therefore, I can say that the direction of the electric field is to the left by convention. So don't get tripped up there. Uh, that would be an easy place to make a mistake.